I think one of the most important things I hope to achieve is to get to know other um, colleagues and how they're meeting their challenges and kind of the ways that they uh, look for solutions to problems, especially in leadership. I'm really hoping to learn from the faculty and also my peers and see how I can develop as a leader. So it's actually inspired me to really think deeply about who I am, not just as a leader, but as a person. Just by connecting me with some really interesting people who have already had some great achievements and who I think will go on to have even greater achievements. The HLA has empowered me um, to consider leadership in all its shapes and sizes and to recognise that I am also a leader. Uh, I like to be pushed a little bit out of my comfort zone, so I think when you start to feel uncomfortable with things, that's a good stimulus for growth. Uh, if you're not feeling uncomfortable, then I think you start to stagnate, and I think that's what the HLA offers as, as an opportunity to do. To think about my own leadership style, and also to try and put on paper some initiatives I'd, I'd like to lead in the future. I can develop as a leader of the team that I'm already involved in with MediSense, but also pick up extra skills that will make me more effective in leading medical, clinical teams in the future. So, hi, my name is Aaron Rons. I'm from your Medical Student University Extra and SDOS Community Manager. And I'm here talking with Babi. Would you like to introduce yourself, Babi? Hi, um, my name is Babi. I am um, Director of Communications for We Are Medics um, on Instagram. And I'm a fourth year at Birmingham Medical School. Awesome. So guys, today we're going to be talking about um, changing lo hospital localities or changing localities in general. So remember to join the SOS Facebook group, join the SOS Slack, and like and subscribe to the Mets Academy YouTube channel to keep up to date with all of our content. So, Vavi, would you like to kind of start the discussion about changing localities? Um, uh, sure. So in Birmingham, we have like a huge area where like the hospitals all sort of belong to the med school. I don't know if that's politically correct. I don't know if they belong to the medical school or the medical school have just like thrown themselves in the deep end being like, we're going to send our students here, but we've got all the way down to Hereford, which is sort of near border Wales, like the little pointy bit, um, all the way up to Wolverhampton and sort of anything and everything in between. So we've got like a huge area. So that's partly because we've got a massive year in every year so we've got something like um 360 to 400 students a year and we've got obviously five years so it's quite a lot of us um but also i think partly because birmingham is so like it's quite a big city i think it's like second or third biggest city in the uk so it is going to naturally have more hospitals more like gp areas more like mental health trusts whatever so in birmingham they're very like keen to get us to switch around so um, every term or every sort of new uh, module we switch around in clinical years and I, th I think at the start I was I don't really know what I thought I thought maybe like oh that's a bit like a pain you know you start to like get to know the team you start to get to know the hospital and suddenly you swap over but I actually like look at it as a really good thing because it means that I get to like work in like 10 different hospitals in the Birmingham area I get to see different ranges of patients different conditions like the Queen Elizabeth Hospital is so niche it's so specialized so I used to think oh my god like I really want to go to QE but now that I'm there and fourth year I'm just like I just want to see the common things I don't want to see like 50 different stroke conditions put on top of each other and then me getting asked what do I think is wrong with this patient I'm fed up of that I don't want that anymore but um yeah, it just means that every sort of new module, you've got like the whole excitement going to a new place. But it also means you've got more inductions, more like day one where you just sat in a lecture theatre and they're like, hello, my name is X and I'm in charge of your education. And like, this is how the plan will go. But that's sort of how it's like in Birmingham. Um, I think you said Exeter's a bit different to what we do. Yeah, so in Exeter, we're like, we're, we're, I think we're completely different, honestly. Like we have one I like say I've stayed in one hospital for basically or like around one area for basically like four years now um so I spent the last two years in the Royal Devon Exeter and now I'm in Torbay Hospital so we don't we really don't move around that much like you stay you stay in a hospital for like at least a year 
Um, so I don't know. It's been. It's like your. I think yours is like very. Is kind of <laughs> kind of stresses me honestly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of like like all of that moving. Like how what's like how how long are your placements? So in third year, we started. Um, I think in October. I would say, and then we finished in December, so like two months placement, and then in the sort of Jan time again, yeah. So we started, I think, second week of Jan, something like that, and then we well, COVID happened, so uh, um, I think it, it was meant to be a slightly longer placement, but we finished um, mid March or end of March, something like that. So again, just over two months. In fourth year, obviously, as you get further down the line, the placements get longer and longer, eating into your summer, cry. Um, so I started, technically, I should have started um, end of June. We did start end of June and we had six weeks of online work, but I would have actually been in a hospital then. So from end of June until the start of August, so a month. Um, and then we came back for September. So from September until December would have been one block so I've just done I'm about to complete my first eight weeks in neurology and psychiatry so I really really love that but get this if you found that stressful let me tell you about this situation so I have every Monday and Wednesday and Friday psychiatry and every Tuesday and Thursday neurology they're at different areas because they're different trusts. Obviously, mental health is its own faculty. And then everything, every other physical health condition is at QE for me at the moment. But then come this eight weeks, I go on to a different module. So I'm in surgery and perioperative care. So that will be at QE. But I could literally be in like Warsaw. So it's all a bit, fourth year is a bit jam-packed because it's sort of, it, it's fast pacing. But then come January, I've got a 16-week placement. So this year, because of COVID, they've split it up into two 16 weeks. But one half of the 16 weeks is split up into two. And that's psychiatry and neurology, which is then further split up into two. So your week is like subdivided. I know it, it's literally getting my heart rate talking about it. Um, but in January, I've got a 16-week placement in just medicine. So every week or two weeks, I will swap. So I'll be in cardiology, one week done, boom geriatrics two weeks done boom okay um endocrinology and diabetes so that's going to be very sort of but that's all in the one hospital luckily aren't they nice <laughs> that is so like, what's what's the farthest you've actually had to travel to go to a placement so me personally um my furthest was russell's hall in dudley so that was um about 40 minutes in the car um with I say with traffic, there was never really sort of not traffic. Um, but the, the actual furthest in the Birmingham area is Hereford. So that's an hour and a half away from the medical school. But they give you accommodation there so you can stay there during the week. And it's free accommodation. They have a cleaner. What the hell? Um, they have a cleaner. It's right by the hospital. Literally, like, you just walk and you're there. And Hereford's a very cute little small sort of town slash city. So it's not bad. But... In January, I'm in Wolverhampton, which I think is just meant to be disgusting to get to. Like, it, you, you go on, I think it's maybe like the M6. I don't know. I don't know my motorways very well. But um, if you, apparently, if you're trying to get there after 8.30, just don't bother turning up. So you have to, like, get there before 8.30. But to get there at 8.30, you have to leave at, like, quarter to seven. And I don't like that. I'm not about that. Me right now, like, I wake up 20 minutes before I need to be at QE, and I'm just, like, rolling out of my bed, like, quickly, let's go. So they do – that's another thing that you brought to my attention in Birmingham because they know it's so um, wide, the area. We actually get – we have, like, this almost algorithm where throughout our clinical years they try and make sure that everyone's equal in the, in the distance that they travel. So if you've had Hereford, you will have Queen Elizabeth or Nia Hospital. Um, so they like balance it out and we actually get paid for uh, our travel. Um, they've got like certain rules, but basically if you're within, if you're, at, if you're over 10 miles, 
away from um, the medical school, like as a point of middle ground, because obviously everyone can live in any part of Birmingham, but it's not sort of a um, place that you can get to by public transport. They pay you something like one pound forty a day. But then if you're even further away than 10 miles and you can't get there by public transport, it's like three pounds something. So I cannot wait for Wolverhampton when I get the dollar coming in. <laughs> Makes their mornings a little bit worth it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Um, no, but like how, can you even, can you really like be a medical student in Birmingham without a car then? So that is a good question. I, I would argue you can't. Um, but I have a car, so maybe that's why. Um, everyone car shares, so that's a great thing because there's so many of us within a trust. There's at least, e even in Hereford, the smallest one, I think there's definitely eight of them there, so that's two full cars. Um, the Birmingham public transport is really, really, really good. Like I love the trains um, for GP placement, so we still do that alongside our um, hospital stuff but I will always sort of find a train nearby and then walk maybe like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Some people will cycle, some people will drive. My, my one housemate cycled to Worcester from here. It's literally like 40 miles. I, and she was like, sometimes I didn't know if I was cycling on a motor. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's illegal, but okay, I'm glad that you're alive. She's like, the cars kept beeping at me. And I was like, you're lucky they didn't like, purposefully hit you because I would have been so annoyed like why is there a cyclist on the motorway get out and she's definitely the sort of person to be like on the fast lane thinking she's like zooming ahead of the cars but um so yeah they've got buses and stuff like that but some of the placements are like really annoying to get to so you can still get there but you've got to take sort of two buses and then you've got to like time it so you might actually leave at like seven to get there for 8, 8.30, even if your teaching's maybe at like 9.30 or 10, just because it doesn't work out. But there are everyone sort of car shares and commutes because it works out cheaper for the driver to just collect together and then everyone splits petrol than it would be to just go by yourself. But it is technically Birmingham say you don't need a car and you know people will have cars, so don't like worry about it. But I do think if, say, in your group of, and you're like firm, your teaching group, if no one had a car and you were at a place where it's not Queen Elizabeth or City Sandwell, I think you would struggle a little bit. You do need something to get you there on time with ease. Yeah, that's like, honestly, that's that's really interesting. I never, I don't know, I really imagine that medical schools, medical schools we saw different, like regarding placements. Like, I mean, yeah, I think because when it comes to us really is that it's not it's not like that difficult to get to our placements because as i said like we're there for the entire year but like sometimes we basically have like two main hospitals and uh, like one's in exeter and one's in like like very far away in cornwall so like they're like basically they're so far away that if you like if you like move to cornwall one year you probably may not get back to Exeter for like the entire year because like yeah. there's too much of a hassle to actually drive that far away. So you kind of like are just relegated to like the area that you're in. Um, so it's a bit different. But like, yeah, so I don't think you really, for us, we don't really need a car that much. I don't have a car. And like I have gone out of placement fine. Um, but like for you, you, it definitely seems like you yeah. need a car. So Eamon, do you guys get accommodation in Cornwall if like how does it work what what comes first is it your you pick where you live and then the medical school says ah oh, okay so you're in Cornwall at the moment we'll place you there or is it that they've placed you there and you think Christ next year I'm gonna have to live there it's, it's more you get placed there yeah so like it's very it's very interesting because like some people it's very different like i i personally like spent four years in exeter and then my final year now is in torbay but like some people i think they've changed up so like it's some people it's like their first year is at exeter and then two years in cornwall and then their final fourth and fifth years in exeter right so mainly because like the medical school has gotten bigger and like they need 
more they need more space and churro is to like they've like kind of push more people to like go to churro i think they've expanded churro a bit um yeah so that's kind of what it is for us you don't get your accommodation paid for no oh that's that burns that hurts a little bit but i don't know if it's just a birmingham thing that they give accommodation for hereford because everyone's always like wow like, that's really nice that they do that and i was just a bit like i mean they should do <laughs> do you know what i mean like if you're if you're forcing us to go that far you should be giving us something but to be fair like by the sounds of it they are they are doing a lot more than sort of extra for your <laughs> repayment yeah you are like i'm i just like some guy a guy in southampton was telling me that like they have a similar thing where they they move but they move for the entire year and like mm. the area that he moved to there he was like i think he gets like a place for free for the entire year i was like wow oh my gosh like bliss where's my where's my free i need where's my free accommodation for this yeah literally but then the only problem is well i don't know if it's the same for the southampton story that you're saying but here in birmingham we don't really well we're not there for a whole year because like i said our placements are even i think fifth year it's 18 weeks um i don't know exactly so don't hold me to it 18 weeks isn't the whole year so you do still, everyone ends up renting a whole place in Birmingham for the whole year. Um, not a whole place, but do you know what I mean? Like rent a room for the whole year. And then they get told, oh, you're off to Hereford for either 18 weeks, either two months, either 16 weeks. But you're still a bit like, I just paid for rent here. So I think it is like fair that they do that because you can't, you physically can't commute to Hereford. If, if you need to, if you're doing surgery, like bless your soul and surgery starts at eight and you're trying to leave here for eight to get there, like it takes an hour and a half, like well, hour and 15, like with no traffic, going by the speed limits, you, you can't physically get there any faster. So it makes sense. But also it's almost just like, well, you're not really doing us a massive favor because we are paying rent in a place where we're not going to live anyway. So you may as well give one for free. That is quite nice. Uh, wait, so like, you can get Hereford and surgery in Hereford? Oh, yeah. Do well, you know? no, you can't, you can't, you won't get Hereford twice in one year. Okay. No, and you will never get Hereford twice because it's so far, but um, you can request it. Mm. Like if you've had it or you want it every year, you can request that but very few people request it. Um, but for example, some people who have families near the area or who um, have a home, say in Worcestershire or something nearby, they might request Hereford and Worcester. And because they're further out and they're very um, not well received, they do, if, if they get requests from students, they do try and accommodate that because there's a reason why. So they do do that. But yeah, you don't get it twice because it's pretty unfair. <laughs> So do you have to leave like 6 a.m. for surgery then? Well, no, because you would be staying the night in Hereford. All oh, right. Yeah. Logic. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. But okay. my, my housemate was in Hereford last year and she would literally, she, well, she made such a mess in our house here in Birmingham and would just leave like, bye, I'm off to Hereford. And we'll be like, there's no cleaners in this house. Like in Hereford, you've got cleaners, but we don't have cleaners here. Um, but she spent, she would leave Monday morning at, I think, sort of like, seven or eight a.m i think probably eight get there for like nine nine thirty um and then should be back by like uh wednesday midday so she only but that was because the third year we only had sort of three well f technically four days of placement but it depends how they structure it they might only have teaching thursday morning and then if she wanted to go back she can go back but she did actually spend more nights in Birmingham than in Hereford, which I could believe because of the mess, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like how how do you like this this is like so off topic then <laughs> like Go on. So, how do you feel like you handle like when a when a roommate uh, is or a flatmate I mean is messy? I'm just sort of like <laughs> I mean I'm not um I'm not the tidiest in the world but you know when sometimes you're just like this is it's so messy it's so like disorganized like 
that's it I've, I've blown my fuse now um I normally just sort of like just start cleaning and then I like rant to my home friends like oh my god no one's doing cleaning and they're just like have you told anyone I was like no I just clean it passive aggressively and then just like wait for someone to say thank you and me to just be like it's fine <laughs> I I don't I don't I'm not a therapist but I'm not sure if that is the healthiest way of dealing with it but <laughs> I mean, it depends. Normally at the start of the year, everyone's a little bit better. You don't, you don't really know what the end of the year dynamic is going to be like. But then when it gets to some point, I'm just like, hey, everyone, let's do a group clean tonight. Cool. That's, that's my sort of way of like combating it. But to be honest with you, like, it's not as bad this year, I think. Everyone's a little bit more mature. Um... Yeah, I don't know really. I think also it depends like when I'm, when I think I'm, last year I was downstairs. So like my bedroom was on the ground floor and I would literally have to like walk through the kitchen to get into my room. So I basically called it my flat. Do you know what I mean? And if it was a tip, I was just very much like, I felt really like hurt. So I have to walk through like the stream of dirt to get into my room. Whereas now I'm on top floor. I don't really care what happens downstairs. <laughs> no, like, I mean, be on the ground like I was on the ground floor for like two years. Yeah, two years. Oh my god, being on the ground floor is so much stress. Like, yeah. I think it changes you as a person. When you're on ground floor, your mentality is different. You just become the naggy stress head. Were you the naggy stress head? Because I think I was when I was on the ground floor. I like honestly, I was like I just didn't I honestly didn't care that much for the kitchen, but like I I just like had I made sure I had a fan. So like, I just had a fan like next to my head and I just like turn it on so that I could hear I, it would be like white noise. So I couldn't hear yeah. anyone. Else. Okay. Yeah, to be fair, the noise thing was an issue. Um, and like if someone comes in from like partying, it's like I like wakes you up at two AM. My um my sort of like devil story of the ground floor was I'd be like in bed whatever I'd have to drive quite early morning sometimes so when I didn't have to I'd have like a nice lie-in lie-in till about like I don't know 8 30 or something and um my one housemate the one who was driving to Hereford come downstairs open the door like the door would like slam shut she'd get ice from the freezer at January time She'd make herself a bloody iced latte, iced latte, iced coffee, whatever. But to do that, she would like put her ice in a blender and it go like absolute carnage. And I'd be there like in bed about five meters away from the culprit and her blending ice. But it's fine now because I probably get up earlier than her. And second of all, again, top floor, nothing, bliss. But that, yeah, was, yeah. that was awful. It's just, it's just so much rare being like on the top floor where you're like escaping from all like oh, like like my my friend like he he like he's one of my closest friends. But oh my god, like he just like he runs down the stairs. <gasps> one of them too. <laughs> like, and and it's like it's like do you really need to run down the yeah. like? It does it save you that much time to run down the stairs? <laughs> well, let's channel this energy into some other form of skill. But literally, my housemate last year, we would call her like the rabbit because it was just, it was like, Brrr! and I was just like, it sounds like you're falling down the stairs. Like you physically cannot go from top floor down here in two seconds. I I don't agree that you have your legs have done this. And she was like well, gravity just takes me. It actually ends up being less work for my quads. And I was like, maybe you should make them work. I don't know, just because you can just tell. And in the mornings, I, was, I got really good at like telling who was coming in the kitchen based on their movement slash ice blending. So I could tell who was in the kitchen and if I wanted to come out or not. <laughs> I was just like, I can't deal with you this morning. I'm going to stay in bed. Yeah, I mean, like, when, you, when you're like hearing so many people pass away all the time, you actually get like used to how they walk. Like some people like drag their feet. Some people like walk faster. Like you can really, you can like definitely. You can be like, that's definitely like you, isn't it? No, but like, and it does like when someone like runs those, it's like kind of like 
is like, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send this video to my friend Ashley because <laughs> she'll <laughs> vent my feelings. I don't know, but anyway, but because like I walk very lightly because like my parents are like very light sleepers and I like I walk around during the night. So like just on a normal occasion, I just walk lightly. Like I literally like mul- I've like lived with multiple people and like. I always just scare them, like when I like come in the kitchen because like I, I like say hello and like they're like I did not realize there was anyone here. <laughs> like no one realizes I'm behind them until like <laughs> I actually see talent them. Talent and a very scary thing at the same time. <laughs> I just like. Oh my God, Jesus. <laughs> I don't like. I'm I'm outside my room. I don't know. I would not. I would not be able to tell quite clearly. Apparently. <laughs> my same friend last year like i've scared him probably like a dozen or more times I love scaring people but i'm not i think i'm sort of similar like because of home like i'd be quite light-footed because you know in, i'd always go upstairs and i'd be like oh, i've got a glass of water like, i know in the morning i'm gonna wake up sahara desert in my mouth like it's gonna be awful so i'd like go downstairs but i don't want to like wake anyone slash my dog that's my biggest i just, I just don't want to wake the little boy so here but I do I might like ask my ground floor friend being like what's my what's my like gait how do I walk tell me because obviously like we just said people on the ground floor like are more attuned I want to be like what's my like distinguishing characteristic when I walk because I think I do walk like lightly but I don't think it's to the point where people think I'm a floater and when I say I like to scare my housemates I literally just like hide and I go boo like really loud <laughs> Like at, at four AM, do you know what I mean? Like it's really inappropriate, but uh, Are you okay, man? <laughs> it's just so funny watching them be like, ah! <laughs> I mean I can't like I can't imagine it's so scary if you're at four AM no. <laughs> You know when you get like giddy or you're like bored. I get bored so often that I'm just like, I'm gonna go scare this person. So I like open their door and I'm like, hello. It's normally the ground floor person, so I do feel bad. Maybe I need to stop triggering her because she, she's probably on edge anyway. <laughs> Hiding. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wearing off now. I'm less bored, so. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, how do you have, um, do you have any, are you excited for, like, final year? <sighs> yes and no. Because at the moment, actually, God, you brought up a whole can of worms. Um, I don't know whether or not I want to intercalate after fourth year. So I um, last year, I was really, I had it set in my mind. I would intercalate in a master's in medical ethics and law. I thought that's something I'd really like to do. Um, it's a master's. It would be brilliant. It would be a year out. When my other friends are doing a year out, the timing sort of worked quite well. But then I actually looked into it and it turns out a master's, you can only do after fourth year. So I was like, oh, okay. I'm really enjoying fourth year. I love the clinical aspect of it. I've really enjoyed psychiatry. It's like open my eyes, like a new area of medicine. Um, but it's come to the point now where I can see like the home stretch. And I'm a bit like, do I want to, at this point, and now that I've got this momentum, two years of clinical years done, um, do I want to take a year out? It's going to be a really busy year and, and finish that and then come back for fifth year. But I feel like after the, however many months during lockdown, my brain shriveled and my skills shriveled. But I think this, the exact same thing is going to happen, but if not more, because it's going to be a whole year out of medicine. So now I'm just thinking about that because I am really excited for fifth year. Like I think it'll be great fun doing the, um, the pediatric placement in Birmingham, we've got Obzingaini and GP. And then the other placement is the acutely unwell patient. So just everything acute, ITU, A&E, AMU, SAU, whatever. But it's literally just, I'm ba- like bouncing back and forth on the idea whether to like just go through the program or whether to do this degree and apply and see how I feel, but I just really don't know. That's fair enough. I mean, like, I, I didn't, I did not, I did it intricately. So, like, I have, I guess, I, guess, I don't really have any thoughts on it, but like, I definitely feel like, I don't feel like anyone will rest intercalating, but also, I think it's definitely a very big 
decision on like whether you want it that entire year yeah i personally i didn't really want to stop like clinical stuff for a year mm-hmm. and then start back if that makes sense yeah. so i was like it was i was like i kind of if i was to do a degree i would probably do a degree or like during training or maybe take some time out of training to do a degree if that makes sense but not i wouldn't like i don't think i wanted to like do a year in medical school yeah mm-hmm. yeah so how are you enjoying your year then i think it's definitely interesting like i feel i feel like it's a lot it's a lot different from first year like i was i was literally telling from this last like last night it's like in first year like you got all your schedules like yeah. you got like you had a, a same timetable set for you yeah. and like you knew exactly where you're going at exact times um and now it's kind of like you need to do this yourself or you're gonna fail um <laughs> <it's> <laughs> that. yeah so it's very it's a lot more like the onus is on you to get this done and that i feel like that makes sense it's really prepping you for when you're like actually gonna be f1 and further on so like it's a lot more it feels like it actually feels like a lot more responsibility than last year yeah it may just be because like last year like we had like place of partners so it was like i i had like two people and like kind of like you kind of bumps like bumps responsibility off of each other so like if one person forgot something like you like another person will be like we need to get this done yeah but now, like, I think I'm, I'm, it's basically just me on my placement. So it's kind of like, I need to remember, like, that I need to get this done. Yeah. You're so, your own sort of responsible partner. Yeah, that is a lot of work. You know? <laughs> what, what sort of um, placements or rotations do you do in your final year? In final year, we get like five weeks of, um, five weeks of specialties. Uh, acute medicine, medicine, surgery, and then GP. So to this year, I have ENT anesthetics, care of the older per- person, and um, ophthalmology, along with GP. Okay. So I think, like, it, it really is, like, interesting, like, how everyone does it so differently, because, like, you guys, you guys have these 16 weeks and then you have more things in GP we had like from third year to fourth year we had like one week in like in pro in probably like two dozen specialties mm. and now we have like five week blocks yeah so M- mind you you were saying all them five weeks and I was just like how many weeks are in a year like it seems like they've two years for your final year how does this make sense but it's really really strange isn't it because you'd think or generically oh everyone does psychiatry in like fourth year but i don't think that's true is it have you guys well i'm guessing you guys have done psych or will do psych or something like that right yeah we had like we had about one one week of one week of reg of adult psychiatry and one week of child psychiatry between third and fourth. Oh, you did you did child psychiatry? Interesting. Yeah. So we like honestly we. It's interesting because we like, I don't know. I'm not. I definitely not even sure which one is better. Like I feel like a lot of medical school, medical schools, you do like long blocks in like, a select number of specialties, and like we do short blocks, in probably almost every specialty yeah and then we do long blocks in a in a number of specialties mind you you say that but in this eight weeks i am meant to cover all of surgery and anesthetics and then in the 16 weeks we cover all of medicine so that is it does end up being a long block of short blocks so my other housemates who are on um the general well the specialty medicine rotation i think is what it's called so they've got to do they've got 16 weeks to cover i think it's something like 10 specialties of medicine so they some of them are one weeks but most of them are sort of like 
I don't know, it works out that almost, well, quite a few of them, maybe like sort of 60, 70% are two week rotations. And then the rest like one week gum, one week ophthalmology, one week this, one week that. And it's very much like, oh my goodness, that's a bit intense. So literally come Sunday, they're like, cool, I need to learn everything for cardiology. Otherwise tomorrow I'm just going to look like a fool. And one of those days gets taken off for GP. So yeah, like you said, we, we do GP from first year. We do um, eight days in first year. No, we might do four days. I can't remember. So we do at least four days, but I think it's eight days in first year. Second year, it's definitely eight days. Third year, it's 10 days. Fourth year, I think it's 10 days. And then fifth year, it's five weeks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's not like, that's kind of, yeah, that's definitely different. I think because we tried to how we actually worked it. I think because we did, we basically, we did like half days in first year. We did a couple, we did, I don't know, probably under 10 half days in first year. And then the second year, we did like a whole day every month, I think it was. Okay. And then the third year, no, you get like a couple of weeks each term. So we did like, we have done, we did like six weeks every year since third year, five or six weeks of a GP every year. Mm, I would love that. I really like GP. <laughs> I think, I feel like, yeah, yeah, we have a lot of GP. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's kind of like, I, I really, it's, it's very interesting because I mean, I didn't, uh, there, a friend of mine, I was, I was in university <laughs> because it's going life, but um, like, yeah. I think she was saying that she didn't actually get she doesn't actually get any surgical placements for like her entire like for medical school or she just like gets a few yeah a few weeks or something like that so which I, I was like that's really surprising yeah I love a, a an acute surgical abdomen I just love it it just makes sense it's like you've got pain in this quadrant okay literally what is what are the organs in this quadrant it might be any one of these problems and I'm just like yes logic I love it whereas in me a medical abdomen it's like do you have anxiety like is this a reason for your pain do you have Crohn's do you have celiacs do you have ulcerative colitis like what could it be and I just don't like that I like pressing on the stomach this hurts okay let's think about what could actually be in this area yeah I mean I think it's it's so interesting because I mean I mean, I'm, I'm going to say interesting a lot. So I'm sorry about that. Everything's um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, everything's interesting. Um, yeah, because I mean, I think I was on PD. I was on PEDS, I think. And like, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't realize that like kind of anxiety could give you so much abdomen pain. I, I never, I think I never really experienced a patient that had yeah. so much pain with um, anxiety. So it was, it was really like surprising to me like learning about that yeah I, I find it so interesting yeah when you've, um, you've you've got me saying it now interesting oh my goodness stop it um when you read stuff but obviously you don't take everything in because you can't do but um yeah when you read stuff and then it actually like happens or it happens and you you're thinking oh it, it must be this list of causes and then actually the doctor in charge or whatever is like i actually think this could be anxiety and just like whoa this happens like i didn't but you've gone from my list of like textbook thingies and he's like yeah life's not really like as simple as that so that's always um you know how did you find peds like how did you find I don't know, working with children, working with the team, how did you like fit into that? Because they're quite close, aren't they? Like Pete's staff members. Yeah, I think so. Honestly, I feel, I feel like, I feel like Pete's are like really, the Pete's doctors are super nice. Like, I've, like all of them are really, really sweet. Um, I think, I don't know, it was different because I, I, I don't think I would go into Pete's Right. personally but like I feel like the work they do is like really amazing like they like the information they're able to get from yeah. patients that may not be able to say mm. is actually happening with them like prop like properly like that's that like is a really amazing um yeah but like 
I think I think my my favorite part was probably Pede's um, emergency. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe just because I quite like emergencies, just because like you get like a lot of different things that like you have to talk, you have to like figure it out fast, and then like make your diagnosis, and then like choose what we have to. Do. Um, yeah. So I know I do like. <laughs> that's kind of my thoughts on Pete. Yeah. Well, actually, I am um, applied for a job in uh, Birmingham Children's Hospital. It's only for fourth years and above um, to work in an emergency pediatric department as like a medical assistant, clock patients, whatever. And I had my interview on Wednesday. Fingers crossed, I get it. Um, I'm going, they're going to contact me. Um, I don't know why it did that because they probably will contact me to say I didn't get it, but it's fine. Um, they'll contact me by Wednesday and I literally had like a dream but they sent me my feedback and it was like in red like like as a negative like research too much about BCH and I was just like in my dream I like texting my boyfriend being like I bloody told you I shouldn't have meant I shouldn't have researched it I told you it was not necessary now they're gonna like throw me off and I was just like this is so dramatic wake up <laughs> but yeah so I'll let you know how that goes but hopefully you you're gassing it up now I feel like it's meant to be I mean, like honestly, like I feel you'll be fine. Like I think the, the you they were have, so nice, and even the the consultants will, did even mention the same thing. Basically, being like, "Oh yeah, we're known as the vets of medicine because we just like our patients don't really like speak to us." Imagine calling a child like a horse. <laughs> I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be like go so far as call children animals, but I mean, like <laughs> that's that. what I said. No, like no, no, they love it. They they just they get really excited every child's a different animal like this person's a pony and i was like interesting i wonder what i would be i reckon i'd be a unicorn i've done that yeah no you have to you have to get involved now what do you think you mean whether you would be a unicorn no sure. what would you be i'm definitely a unicorn you can say what you want but i'm a unicorn that's not really an animal though is it? it's not real <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know, like i don't know, do you ever get like very bored and just like kind of like imagine like if you could turn into any animal like what would it be or is that just me like, i get i get very bored. well yesterday we went on a walk into the house and i said if you could have any sort of superpower but only one of them which one would it be and everyone was like thinking about it and i was like flying would be cool and then someone was like yeah but i'd rather just like teleport because then i don't have to like waste the hours and i was literally like how busy are you to like not fly and get over it? But then I was like, I found a loophole. I was like, I know what power I'd have. They were like, oh my God, go on. And I was like, like the, what is it? Like the, the earth powers or whatever it is where it's like fire, water, wind, and like earth. I was like, yeah, that would be me. Cause that, that way I've got four in one. So that's what I decided. I feel that's a good decision. That's a good decision. I don't know about the animal thing. I've never really thought about it, but I'd probably go for like top of the food chain, so sort of have mm. that security, maybe like some something like a tiger. Yeah, I feel like I'd either go for like a big cat, mm. like a jaguar or something like that, or maybe like something a big herbivore, like a rhinoceros. Yeah, because they're they're still scary, but like you've got like a nice diet. You know? I wouldn't I wouldn't mind being like an aquatic animal, but I feel like I don't know. I might get bored of the sea. I mean like, You don't know what sort of stuff is down there at the bottom. I don't wanna like see that. I don't wanna scare myself. Oh my god, like imagine like imagine if like there was no like we had like imagine if the if the like the parts of the sea that we had not like seen yet, there's like giant sharks and stuff like that. No, thank you. I would, I would, I would, it might be the giant sharks in this situation, but still, no, thank you. Like, I saw this thing, and it was just like we we only we've only discovered like five percent of what is in the ocean, and I was like, uh-uh, I'm never going into like open water ever again. Like, no, thank you, absolutely no way. Oh, like, I literally I saw a YouTube video. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, I think this 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 squid was sickly, but like the squid was definitely about with tentacles was about eight feet long. And like he started to like climb onto the surfer's like surfboard, and like the, like his friend was just like cackling like while the squid was literally the squid was literally on his surfboard. I would have fainted from stress. 
I would have like I would have like just he he like kept he kept going off and going on surf where I would just like you just abandon the surf where I like swim. You leave. You move yourself away from this toxic situation. Um, Amen. Over summer, I was like walking through a field and I had just sort of like ballet pumps on, so literally like normal sort of like plimsolls or whatever they're called, and um, so like the middle part of my foot was like exposed, you know, like the inner bit, mm. and um, I was walking trying to like quickly like jump from this like longish like grass or whatever it was literally like maybe like just under knee length sort of like mid mid calf and then suddenly I feel something like wet on my foot and I was just like I don't know what this is and I look and it's an actual slug I hate all bugs I hate all insects I literally screamed I was like get it off me get it off me hurry up like my friend was like literally like three meters away like ew come here and I literally had to like flick this thing off it took so much courage for me to flick the slug off my own skin and I was just like I'm not even trying to be funny you have to literally pick me up and put me where there's no grass I'm not doing this ever again like cheers and I just like walked off afterwards I wasn't even like thank you I was like nah I'm over it thanks for bringing me to this place where I got violated by a slug (laughs) I hate them so much so much and it's getting to that da- dark damp season where you just walk around and there's like slugs and snails everywhere ew I, frogs. that's a phobia i actually have a phobia of frogs really frog really why because they're like, disgusting <laughs> that's why <laughs> i mean i don't think i have a problem with amphibians snails or slugs i think i don't love bugs that much I, th- I, I I like most bugs I don't really like I hate cockroaches mm. and probably I don't like I don't I can handle more spiders but I, like, I just like I'm from Barbados so like you guys have like this big brown spider I was and I was like the spider is like like this big I was like that's too big a spider <laughs> like, that's too big I would have thought that the sort of bugs here are more boring and like smaller i don't know because the only spiders i really see are daddy long legs and they're even for me i'm sort of like that's gross but i can deal with you in the corner if you stay in that corner i sort of like watchful wait it like sort of like i will just surveillance the situation and see if it moves but do they not have like bad hairy spiders in barbados you know like big boys that you see in like australia i could just that's just sort of what like imagine the sort of creatures on like warm nice places are there has to be some balance in the world you can't have everything on these lovely islands so there has to just be like disgusting insects <laughs> no like the biggest spider we have is probably daddy long legs honestly really That's, oh yeah. my god i could deal with that <laughs> but like um we do have centipedes which are like i don't have you ever seen a centipede before yeah like on a picture i don't think i've actually seen one in the flesh like what like they look gross, but I don't think they would physically like threaten my life. Like honestly, I think it depends because I think the are ones they we have, double big. Pardon me. Are they like huge or? Because I was um, expecting like this big. Some of them are like some of them in like other countries are massive, but like ours aren't that big. But they're like they're probably about six inches at max. But like right. they can like turn like a a gray color or like. Like as they get older, they like you can see from their color that they're older and they're just a little bit bigger. But it's not really the size, it's like their venom is Whoa. so painful. Like I mean, I've got a I've got a bit of like I can't the older ones venom is just I can't I think that'll probably send you to hospital. But like the younger ones, like I've gotten bitten by one before and oh my gosh, it's like it's like it's kind of like waves of electricity emanating from the bite. Oh my god! You've literally got me like looking down at the floor in case like one of these bad boys like just like leaps out. What the hell? Uh, me being like, no, I don't think it will threaten my life. Like the actual bug phobic, and then you just go and tell me that they will send me to hospital. Cool. I was about to say Barbados sounds like a dream. No negatives. I'll be going there for my elective if it ever happens. But no. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just like scared you away from our bits. Um away from anywhere that has <laughs> centipedes. So I think most hot places have centipedes, honestly. Yay. 
I just need to wear wellies everywhere. I think that's a safe bet. Yeah, that is probably but a good section. I mean, like, have you, I like, honestly, I think I would like to see a, a, like, a really big anaconda, but like, I also. In a zoo environment? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it in the wild, but also like, I would make sure to stay away from it in the wild because I don't want to die. That's really wild. I'm really glad that you've come to this conclusion by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because like, you see people where like snakes are like, absolutely massive like probably like a hundred pounds and it's just like are you not worried they're gonna like strangle you in your sleep or something yeah to death <laughs> um yeah no see when i see people with like giant snakes i'm just like oh my god what has happened for you to like decide this is where you want to be like what has brought you to this moment right now because i would just i i'm too terrified of snakes yes no I think they're quite cool. Like in films, I'd be like, ooh. But actually, no, have you seen that film, Snakes on a Plane? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh. <gasps> oh my God. My like hairs are on end just thinking about it. Like there were so many bloody snakes on that plane. I like, honestly, I, honestly, I love horror movies. So like, I love that Same. movie. I love like the psychological horrors, but. Yeah, it did the job. I was literally sat in my seat like, oh, disgusting. But there were genuinely like too many snakes. Like all I could hear was hissing. Yeah, it was like, I don't know. I, I just... Imagine if you were on that play, like how would you even react? What would you do at this point? I mean, like, I guess you would just die, wouldn't you? Like you just like resist. Yeah. Do you do you though like stay super super still and hope that they won't like attack you, or do you genuinely just like take the L and be like, well, I'm gonna die? So. I mean, like, that's actually, I feel like I I feel like I fight it. Like I I like if, if, if those snakes are so aim in there with like some sort of pen, like trying to stab all of the snakes on that plane, single handedly defeated the snakes. I don't know, honestly, I probably would just like lock myself in the bathroom. <laughs> just like Did did someone not think of doing that? I think they thought of it and then the snake came out from like the actual toilet and I was like uh, I don't understand how the snake got in the toilet system. And also surely why wouldn't you just like close that seat? Uh or was a person on the toilet actively? I don't know. I think, yeah, I don't know. I can't, I think they might have been on the toilet. I can't even remember them. But yeah, that was that was such an old movie. Yeah. yeah. Good. Wait, was good. It? Yeah, it was good. Have was your favorite horror movie? Um, I was gonna ask you the same question. I actually really enjoyed watching The Boy. Me and one of my really close friends, we love like watching horror movies together. Um. So we watched The Boy because I think it was actually like a decent plot and you were genuinely like, what the hell, like, is this toy literally alive? Like, how? Because, you know, most of them, they're either, they seem like it's some sort of like spiritual creature or something, but it's actually like someone else, either having a joke or whatever. Um, but that was actually really quite good. I rewatched Annabelle with the same friend because I remember watching it when I was literally like 16 like crying myself to sleep in the cinema being like I can't watch it like ah, it's so scary but um I, I actually now that I think about it I didn't really like rewatching Annabelle and The Woman in Black I think is like a pretty decent sort of like gothic thriller I would argue what about you what's your insight on the horror film sitch I mean I think I quite like I quite like shock scares, I say. Um, the jumpy ones. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, awesome. things like, thing, I, I like, Chucky was like one of my first horror films. Like, Chucky, like, I like, I, I was like, I was done with, um, with like stuffed toys. Like, I was like, after Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're not doing stuffed toys anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> um, you know what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not having them come to life on me. Like, we're not, we're not doing that. Don't want to take that risk, no. I was, I was younger, so like, I'm not like, I'm not like that much of a baby now. But I, 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 I would still, if I'm like, 
after watching Annabelle, there's absolutely no way I would comfortably sit in someone's house when they have like a porcelain doll there. I would just be like, oh, this is not fun. Honestly, Annabelle, like, Annabelle was the ugliest doll, though. Like, yeah. it, was, it was meant to be <laughs> kind of creepy. I was, yeah, maybe, maybe that's the reason why everyone died because she was just so ugly. That's it. Full stop. No one loved her. So she was like, I'm going to do the same to you folks. But I didn't actually really get the story of Annabelle. And I have to rewatch it. Because I was just like, I swear, I swear she was accidentally killed. So why did she then? At- oh no, she died, didn't she? But the spirit wasn't Annabelle's spirit. It was like a demon spirit, yeah. wasn't it? Okay, cool. We've solved the plot. Calm down. <laughs> um, so go on, what other ones? So you do you prefer then the like violent ones like Saw and where like blood comes off, everyone's screaming? Or do you prefer like the mental, mental ones? I mean... Oh. I don't know. I feel like I don't. I wouldn't say I prefer the violent ones, but I do. I do like a good ghost story. I do like a good ghost story. Interesting. I live like Annabelle, like the possession, like like an exorcist, like exor- the exorcist films. Like I, I do love. I love the Purge films. I don't know why I didn't say that. I love the Purge films, and genuinely, the storyline is actually decent. I feel people were saying like Purge is horrible. I quite, I honestly like, I like all of the films, honestly. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why. I'm trying to think of, because I swear this one I haven't seen. So the first Purge I've seen definitely, it's with the mask, it's a classic one where it's like the house gets locked but it gets broken into and that guy comes in. Seen that one. What's the next Purge? What's Purge 2? I think it was Purge Anarchy. So it was like where. I, it was where, like, the person, oh my gosh, what was it? Basically, it was looking at a, a son and, or no, a two, it was looking at two mothers, and they were trying to, like, they they were looking at, like, those are, like, richer people, I think. So, like, they had like, the fast security system. And it was looking now at, like, less fortunate people and, like, how they deal with the purge. So it was like actually looking at like the city areas and stuff like that. And they were basically like trying to run away. Right. I don't think I've seen the second one. What was the third one? Where it's the purge election year, maybe? Yeah, I think so. The purge election year, that one I think was, they were literally, so they were actually like people like, affluent people were actually like, I think selling people. Like selling poor people to like, yeah, be like killed in yeah. their homes. I think that was like the election year. Yeah, and then, uh, they were trying to save this um this politician who won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that one. I think, and then the final one that I can remember is the first purge, which yeah. was focusing, which was focusing on like a really poor area of the country, and in the first purge the white affluent politicians targeted this like very um, deprived area full of like ethnic minority groups being like, you guys will test out the first purge. And everyone there was just like, what? Like, we don't really like agree with this. But then they realized, okay, cool. Yeah, they're literally doing the purge, like get rid of us, like sort of like, oh, scum of the earth, let them kill each other sort of thing. But then I can't remember what the ending was, but I think this guy was just sort of like, saved a few people but only he saved enough i'm not too sure but then there's another purge coming out but i've not seen that is there another purge coming out oh, i think so they, they're always bashing out a new purge i think like i think they just love the purge movies no maybe it's like the final purge maybe i think i think it was something along the lines of and no more purges oh, okay i thought like the the, the one with the politician ended the purges man I may be wrong. I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I'm confused, but there's definitely a new purge. We should watch that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> do a reaction video <laughs> to the purge. <laughs> and you both are like, <gasps> <laughs> I honestly, I I like horror movies, but I'm like, I'm a big scary cat. So Same. I, I need to, like, if I'm watching one, I either need someone there with me or I need to watch it in a dark room but know that it's daytime so that once I, like, open my blinds, it's, like, sunshine and I feel protected and I forget by the time I go to sleep. Otherwise, I will never fall asleep. Oh, my, I literally, 
I was so embarrassed when I was like, I was with my friend in London and we were watching, um, you remember the one Animal Graveyard? It's Stephen King, I don't think it was called Animal Graveyard. No. Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. I've ne- never seen it. Oh, well, like, I won't spoil it for you, but like basically like, it started like with, um, I was, I was actually like, imagine me like in a full cinema, like before, like before a lot of like, yeah. this is like last year. Um, and like i think literally it was like completely quiet a completely quiet road and then like this loud truck comes up and like i was so ready to be scared i literally like i think i like literally screamed in like <laughs> in, a, in, a in a silent theater and everyone's looking like someone sent this guy home <laughs> <laughs> like I like you mean that a truck. It wasn't actually something scary. It was literally like a moving object came onto screen, and you were like, ah! <laughs> like we were we were laughing at me. I was so embarrassed. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I'm so I'm glad it's dark. Like no, like <laughs> no one remember my face. <laughs> you know, you were like, I like we were sitting at the front as well. So it's like, it's like. Hopefully, no one realizes where this song was coming from. <laughs> no one realizes it. I remember watching. I don't like watching horror films in cinema because I would be that guy, and I don't want to be that person. Like I would almost like crumble in embarrassment. But I was like forced to watch Split with three of my friends. And do you remember the film Split? It was maybe yeah. like twenty eighteen or something. No, it wouldn't have been 20, like 17, 20, 16. But anyway, I remember literally throughout almost like the whole thing, I had my coat on. I literally had like this like fluffy woolen like trench coat. And I would, I was covering half of my face and any slither of one eye was visible throughout the whole film because I was so like terrified. I didn't want to like watch it, but I didn't want to like just be in a dark like area, not seeing anything so I literally just genuinely there's like a picture of me and it's just this coat on my face and like this part of my eye hanging out but even then I'd like cover this little area because I was just like I don't I don't want to be here I didn't like it I, I, I didn't like, I thought Split was a good movie but I don't know I didn't find it that like much of a horror I found it very like mentally scarring like the worst part of the film for me was the ending where you were just sort of like oh and like the biggest monster is not the one that was defeated. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, fair. Enough. And that, that's the part that I was like, no, I really don't like this. Because normally in horror films, they're like, ah, the worst demon is over. Like maybe there'll be like another demon, but it moves on. But when it's like, nah, this is like this. I don't know. I guess it just depends on what you believe in and whether you do think spiritual things exist and whatever. I still don't know where I stand. I think they do exist, but. I don't really want to think about it. Do you know what I mean? But when it's like a psychological thriller, I do love them the most. But when they make it that it's not, that everyone agrees this stuff happens. Do you know what I mean? Like emotional abuse, like physical abuse, whatever. That's when I'm like, no, I don't like this now. Like it's too like real. Do you know what I mean? That gives me proper nightmares. Whereas stuff like Annabelle and I bet you she's going to turn up in my dreams and be like, oh, you don't think I'm scary enough. But anyway, stuff like Annabelle, you could, like, some people would argue, like, no, that does not exist. It's just a plot. Whereas when you can physically not deny that this stuff happens, that's when I'm like, oh, I hate that film. It was so scary. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I think it's, it's nice to, I think movies are nice to get away from reality. Yeah. And then when they bring it back at the end, I'm like, this is not what I paid for. Refund. <laughs> okay well i think like i think we've we, we've gone enough off topic for like this time so thank you so much Bobby, for your insight into to everything localities movies everything like animals superpowers <laughs> yeah so like okay. <laughs> um, okay so remember to like keep up to date with our content by joining slack our SOS space group and joining the mess academy a youtube channel by liking and subscribing um yeah so thanks guys see you next time bye
I think one of the most important things I hope to achieve is to get to know other um, colleagues and how they're meeting their challenges and kind of the ways that they uh, look for solutions to problems, especially in leadership. I'm really hoping to learn from the faculty and also my peers and see how I can develop as a leader. So it's actually inspired me to really think deeply about who I am, not just as a leader, but as a person. Just by connecting me with some really interesting people who have already had some great achievements and who I think will go on to have even greater achievements. The HLA has empowered me um, to consider leadership in all its shapes and sizes and to recognise that I am also a leader. Uh, I like to be pushed a little bit out of my comfort zone, so I think when you start to feel uncomfortable with things, that's a good stimulus for growth. Uh, if you're not feeling uncomfortable, then I think you start to stagnate, and I think that's what the HLA offers as, as an opportunity to do. To think about my own leadership style, and also to try and put on paper some initiatives I'd, I'd like to lead in the future. I can develop as a leader of the team that I'm already involved in with MediSense, but also pick up extra skills that will make me more effective in leading medical, clinical teams in the future. Leadership is effective. Leadership inspires people to work independently, but it takes real skill and leadership to bring people together for real change.